Good afternoon, East Coast, and good morning, West Coast. My name is Carla Camargo, and you're tuning in to Air France KLM Live, edition number three. We started this virtual event series back in April of this year, and on Earth Day, actually. And thanks to you, our number of viewers have grown both during our live sessions and on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe uh, in the links on the right-hand side of your chat, as well as to our newsletter for US travel professionals. So our goal when we started this was to remain a valuable resource for you, our US travel professionals, uh, providing you guys with the latest information on Air France, KLM products, networks, and services. And today will be no different. With me, I have two individuals from our US leadership team who I'm very proud to call my colleagues, Botan Melis, Sales Development Director, and Fabrice Pasquale, Director of Luxury Markets. Hi, guys. Hello, hello, Carla. Nice to see you. Botan, nice to see you too. Very so, nice to see you all. Very excited. So, Botan, I heard you went on a little escapade a couple of weeks ago. Can you tell us about your journey to Paris and Amsterdam? Oh, yes, absolutely. Last week, I hopped on a, over the transatlantic to visit uh, our main hubs in Paris and Amsterdam for just under 48 hours. I was so excited to get on a plane again. And honestly, it felt really good to travel internationally. At this point, it is really quite simple to get into France. When arriving from the US, you essentially need two things. Your valid passport and a CDC vaccination card. That's all, nothing else required. But when you go to Holland, there's one more thing you need, a negative COVID test result. No quarantining needed whatsoever for vaccinated travelers in either country. Connecting traffic is fully authorized. There are no additional requirements to transfer other than those of the final destination country. So I packed my suitcase on a Wednesday afternoon, took my iPhone with me and hit the skies. My goal was to experience both hubs for myself as they are right now and check out the latest enhancements. Today, I'm going to share with you six tips you should know about the airport experience at Paris Charles de Gaulle and Amsterdam Schiphol airports. So to start with, here's a clip of, my, of, of the start of my journey taking off from Atlanta and arriving into Paris Charles de Gaulle. All right, so let the journey begin. Please join me on this wonderful trip, 48 hours to Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and then hopping on over to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. This is Botan Mellis reporting live from Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson. Let's get in. Bon voyage. I'll say goodbye, au revoir. A demain matin. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, so my arrival in Paris Charles de Gaulle was really smooth. We landed about half an hour before the scheduled arrival time on Terminal 2E, Hall L. Upon exiting the plane, the airport set up a dedicated fast lane for vaccinated travelers. And after a quick document check, I was on the Lisa train in just over five minutes from stepping out of the plane. The Lisa train shuttles between the boarding halls of 2E, which are called K. L M. What a surprise, right? So it's very similar to the plane train in Atlanta or Detroit airports. After a couple of minutes on the train, I arrived on hall K, where I went through the immigration. So here's my tip number one to you. Access number one lanes at Charles de Gaulle. This is the magic word you need to Access number one lanes are reserved for sky priority passengers traveling with Air France and our partners such as Delta Airlines. These express lanes are available at departures, transfers, but also on arrivals. Always remind premium customers eligible for sky priority to take advantage of the access number one lanes at Charles de Gaulle's security checkpoints and immigration too. Welcome to the Sky Priority check-in area of Charles de Gaulle uh, Airport Terminal 2F. So right behind me are Flying Blue Elite members. Sky Team Elite members can check in in this beautiful area. And over there on the right-hand side, customers will be able to go through the access number one Sky Priority security check at the airport.
Yeah, so it may have sounded uh, familiar to some of you, but I know a lot of agents don't know about this. So access number one is really how the French call their fast track on Charles de Gaulle Airport. So um, it's it's an expedited uh, security lane or passport control lane. So you, you can access this lane if you have a sky priority, both for immigration and security, both at arrivals, transfers, or even departures. So I saved a lot of time thanks to access number one. And basically from landing till arriving into the EU, it took me about 20 minutes. So a very important tip, and I hope you can utilize this in your work in the future. Well, this looks like a really smooth and easy, comfortable um, arrival experience for customers at Paris Charles de Gaulle. Is it similar if you arrive or transfer at Amsterdam Schiphol? Well, Amsterdam Schiphol was fully designed around the travelers. It's always a pleasure to arrive, connect or depart from there. I can tell that from experience. That really brings me to my second thing you should know. There's a reason that Schiphol gets frequently ranked as the best airport in Europe. So here's a video from Amsterdam Schiphol Airport uh, that shows why it's Europe's most popular. Welcome to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. We're thrilled to welcome you here on the home base of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. So obviously smooth transfers, smooth arrivals. What other, uh, what other strengths would you say Amsterdam Schiphol has? Well, more than 70% of our passengers' final destination is not the Netherlands. So they are connecting via Amsterdam airport. Therefore, we had to build an airport experience that is 100% ready to cater for the transfers. In fact, Schiphol is a single terminal concept that was designed specifically for international connections. Important thing, you do not need to go through an additional security check upon arrival from the US and transferring to another European flight. And the way back, the same applies. So let's have a look at this video about the transfers. Just about 70% of KLM's traffic is transfer traffic via Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. So we had to make sure that everything goes perfectly around the clock for, for transfers. One of the key features of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport is that it's a one terminal concept. So you got one single terminal on this airport and several different concourses connecting to that one terminal. So today, as you can see on the map above me, we arrived on the D gates from our European Schengen Zone flights today from Paris. And it just takes nine minutes to walk over to the e conquers the ECHO conquers where typically all the North America flights depart from. So when we go through passport control, it's gonna take us less than nine minutes, just about nine minutes to get over to our wide body flight that will take us across, across the Atlantic back home. Okay, so right behind me, you'll see the passport control area of the airport. This is where you have to go through to get to your planes on the intercontinental side of the airport for gates D, 
E and F, where all the North America flights depart from. So, fun fact, on the left-hand side on the bottom, you see the yellow automated gates, which are actually used, can be used with US, Canada passports, uh, in order to get through much faster on the passport control. One of the key features of the airport is all these automated self-service kiosks that are all over the airport. So here you can print your boarding pass, you can change your seat, you can do an upgrade, or you can do a la carte options on the screens. So it's very obvious that Amsterdam Schiphol is a really easy airport to navigate. As uh, one of our audience members, Tammy, agrees as well, it is really easy to navigate, which I can attest to, but I'm usually traveling solo. How's it like for people who are traveling with families? Oh, traveling with children is really a breeze by Amsterdam. The airport can be a fun and really enjoyable transfer experience for the entire family. Let's, li let's take a look at the, uh, some of these features. There are tons of these that will entertain the little ones even behind security. Have a look at my tip number three here. So one thing is for sure, Dutch people definitely like children. That comes across clearly on this airport. The whole entire airport is full of toy shops, play zones, playgrounds areas like the one behind me. And we're going to show you in a couple of minutes the Nemo experience, which is what we would call in the US a science center, originally based in the center of Amsterdam downtown. But here's a mini version of Nemo, the Nemo experience in Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. All right, so welcome to the Nemo experience here on Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, a place that certainly saved my life, not once, for sure. Traveling with an eight-year-old is fun, right? The Junior Jet Lounge is one of KLM's hidden treasures. A unique space dedicated to children traveling alone, this lounge is located in a high-security zone of the airport. Our specially trained staff members watch those UMs while they enjoy games, watch TV shows, or read a book. In case of flight disruptions, we also provide them accommodation. Food and drink options are provided directly from the KLM Crown Lounge. The Baby Care Lounge completely available and open 24 seven. You can come in here with your baby and you can change diapers, you can have in a quiet zone for yourself. And on the, on the other side of it, you will have uh, changing stations and disinfection wipes, whatnot, everything you need with the baby. And here it's all about culture. So this part of the airport is a library. Which airport? Show me another airport that has a library. Right next to me on the left-hand side, there's a kawaii piano for anybody who wants to play here. And right behind you over there, there's the Rijksmuseum, which, well, let's put it that way, the mini version of the Rijksmuseum. Because here on Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, you have a small version of the famous, largest Dutch masterpiece collection gallery, which is originally in downtown Amsterdam. But here between piers E and F, you have a small collection of Dutch masterpieces. Yeah, our next uh, topic will be the KLM Crown Lounge, which is our flagship lounge uh, on Schiphol Airport. Uh, so um, we have a small video about the Schiphol lounges uh, as well. Uh, so it, it, we had a chance to visit here. The lounge is totally open with hygiene in place, according to the COVID uh, regulations and restrictions in, in Holland. The lounge is just gorgeous, extending over 68,000 square feet on three different levels, and it holds a total of 1,450 seats, including an amazing outdoor terrace. So here's my experience on, in the Kalem Crown Lounge. So welcome to the KLM Crown Lounge here on the intercontinental side of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport. Even though our Michelin star chef operated blue restaurant is temporarily closed, the buffet is open at the lounge. Under the current protocols, our staff individually serves hot and cold meals to each one of our guests. Our baristas await all guests with freshly brewed specialty coffee service. 
right, so this is the quiet zone of the Kalem Crown Lounge. These are the 20 sleeping cabins that we have inside the lounge. These cabins are available for purchase for any customer who can enter the lounge. So the showers that we have in the lounge are totally complimentary. So 20 showers are available. You just speak to the staff members there or go to one of the kiosk machines and you can get a key for them to get in. So as you know, KLM is giving out these beautiful Dutch Delft Blue houses in every single intercontinental flight if you travel world business class. So October 7th is our birthday. A few days ago, we just revealed the 102 number house because KLM is 102 years old. The oldest airline operating under the same name in the entire world, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines. So here in the KLM Crown Lounge, there's an opportunity for our customers to exchange these houses. So even here at the KLM Crown Lounge, we are making sure to maximize the experience for our US travelers. Hi guys, sorry about the technical difficulty earlier. Gotta love 2020, 2021. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, it sounds like you had a really good time at Schiphol Airport from behind the scenes at the Junior Jet Lounge, which I know you know very well, Botan, with your hands full with your eight-year-old, um, as well as the Crown Lounge. So, <laughs> but Air France also opened a new lounge as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. Um one of my main goals with this visit was really to have a look at our latest crown jewel, Air France's newest lounge in Terminal 2F of uh, CDG Airport. 2F is the terminal where most flights within Europe operate, which is quite a common connection for travelers from the United States or North America. The new lounge is a true gem, an architectural masterpiece created from scratch between the two piers of Terminal 2F. So here's a clip of my journey, my experience. All right, so here we are on Charles de Gaulle Terminal 2F, and I'm super excited to present you our newest lounge, Salon Air France, on the European side of the airport. This lounge is brand new, just opened a few weeks ago, and it's 30,000 square feet with 570 seats on two levels. A lot of tons of new features, exciting stuff in there. So please join me, let's check it out. Most of Air France's over 20 lounges are open, and in fact, we are ramping up our investment in them even more. The newest one located in Terminal 2F at Paris Charles de Gaulle is one of the largest and most iconic with many new enhancements. One of them I noticed right away when I entered was the touchless check-in. The 32,000 square feet is spread across two floors, designed by a top Paris design studio and flooded with natural light. Once inside, your customers have plenty of options to make the best use of their time. Catch up on some work with high-speed Wi-Fi and work areas, relax in comfortable sofas and lounges, or savor one of the French culinary delights from the hot and cold buffet. The lounge looks absolutely stunning and I cannot wait to Check it out myself. <laughs> um, but I know it has like, some, uh, some exceptional features that you don't normally find in domestic lounges or in medium hall lounges. Um, can you walk us through some of those cool features, Botan? Absolutely. Um, indeed, the word domestic may be relevant when we compare the orientation of the flights uh, departing from uh, CDG 2F. In fact, all our intra-Schengen European flights operate in that terminal. So these are typically one to three hours long either domestic or European flights, very similar in length to, to what you would see in a domestic US traffic. So it's important to note that Air France and KLM continue uh, to provide lounge access, even for these short flights, these relatively short flights. Um, example, from Amsterdam to Luxembourg or Paris, to Luxembourg, 45 minutes flight or 35 minutes flight, we still provide um, access to the lounge on these short flights. Um, based on the card tier level, so gold and above. 
or your travel cabin if you travel in business class. But back to your original question, indeed, we do have some outstanding new features in this lounge. So let's have a closer look. As stunning as this lounge is, there's still more to be discovered upstairs. Showers to refresh. Quiet cabins to take a rest. Guests can even receive a complimentary skin or wellness treatment by Clarence. There's even a dedicated zone to provide personalized service for Flying Blue Ultimate members. Customers traveling in economy class are welcome to enter for a fee subject to availability. Wow, my goodness. Is there anything this lounge does not have? I mean, it has everything. Yeah, it's really an amazing experience, top notch. But we haven't seen one thing and that's the detox bar. Well, next time we'll deliver some images about that. <laughs> Somehow we missed that. But Air France really understands the large proportion of our premium travelers uh, to these European destinations connecting from the long haul flights like, like the ones from North America. So I also want to point it out that all features are totally open. We're back on track and welcoming our North American customers as they transfer or depart from Charles de Gaulle on the European flights. And I know that's really good info for our viewers right now. Um, I can't wait to go travel to Paris myself. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows we just need a passport and a CDC vaccination card to enter France, right? That's absolutely correct at this point. Yeah. Nice. So now I just have to see if I can convince my family if I can skip Thanksgiving this year. Pretty doubtful I can I can make that happen, but let me just have that dream. Um, kind of like how I dream about flying La Premiere one day. Um, such a, I mean, it, La Premiere is, is basically like flying, it's, it's travel goals really. And I have no one better other than our one and only Fabrice Pasquale who can tell you exactly what makes La Premiere so special. Fabrice, hello. Thank, thank you, Carla. Dear travel professionals, dear travel partners, uh, it's really a pleasure and an honor to, uh, to be here with you all. Um, La Première, the first class uh, product for Air France, traveling into 18 destinations worldwide, has been recognized for its many awards, which uh, we share together with you, our partners. Um, four private suites separated by curtains. So now you all know that uh, the La Première is only offered on the 777-300, and then your bed, uh, becomes a six uh, long 6.5 feet long in length with a memory form mattress pillow and large duvet uh, and also la premiere is known for so the association with top chefs uh, we actually have now arnaud donkele a three a michelin star so not only providing the comfort but also uh, what france has to best to offer uh, the gastronomy on you will see a video of la premiere uh, as Boton showed many videos, so of course I wanted to show also uh, to you all uh, a video of La Première. So on the video, you will see one of our guests uh, actually leaving the Ritz Hotel, uh, the iconic luxury palace, the unique, with its unique garden, the Hemingway Bar. Uh, and then our guest will actually enter the Earth Drive View Mercedes, which is complimentary to and from Charles de Gaulle to Paris uh, city limit within 40 kilometers, about 24 miles. Um, and then there is a dedicated area at Charles de Gaulle, uh, located at Charles Gaulle Tui, opposite gate 14, where, where the guests will be uh, greeted uh, by a La Première attendant and escorted to the La Première check-in, which is only dedicated to uh, the La Première uh, ticket holder. Um, and then you'll see that they will be escorted uh, through a special lane into the actual La Première Lounge. La Première Lounge also recognized for, um, with many awards, um, always the top, in the top five 
worldwide, and uh, we are very uh, pleased with that. Um, during the uh, pandemic, actually, we uh, closed a little bit in the beginning, and we used that time to refurbish our lounge. So our uh, guest will now see uh, a refurbished. Uh, the bar, instead of being red, will be white. Uh, is white, actually. Uh, and now, uh, actually, today, just for you as a scoop, uh, we just started the uh, renovation of our spa, uh, which will be announced uh, soon with a new uh, provider. So can't say much more on that. Um, and then you will see also our guest in the lounge uh, eating at, uh, treating herself to uh, Chef Alain Ducasse uh, with all this French delicacy. Um, and then uh, you will see that uh, our guest will actually be driven uh, by luxury on the tarmac in order to uh, to get uh, to her plane. So please enjoy and bon voyage. Bon Voyage indeed, so luxurious and obviously an amazing product from Air France. And seeing all of these, these features explains exactly why Air France won four Skytrax awards this year and was made, named the best airline in Europe. Uh, we are so grateful and proud of that recognition. All right, so that about wraps up our content for, um, for what we had planned for you today. But before we move on over to q and I just wanted to share a fun fact. The majority of the video content that you saw today was actually just filmed in under 48 hours, only a couple of weeks ago. Was not joking when Botan went on an escapade to Paris and Amsterdam. Uh, so yeah, the team has been quite busy and just really excited to share with you this content that we curated especially for you. So now let's take some questions. We've received a lot of um, questions actually even before today's live session from our attendees. Um, maybe we can start pulling some up. Oh, here you go. Sandy asks, are there airport COVID testing sites at Amsterdam and CDG? Botan, you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Yes, there are testing facilities on both airports. Uh, they're uh, very robust, great facilities. Having said that, I would like to uh, encourage everyone to do their testing before getting to the airport. Nevertheless, as a last minute uh, resource you know, option, you still have uh, on Charles de Gaulle Airport, right under the 2E terminal 
on the land side, you have a testing facility, you need to make reservations, you need to make uh, appointments uh, on the doctolib. Dot fr and we're going to give you this uh, this URL address. So you need to make uh, appointments on this website. Now, I'll be very transparent to you. This website is only available in French. You will find out yourself. <laughs> Why would it be on any other language, right? It's an international airport, but but you get your results with the, in 15 or 20 minutes. You have rapid testing there. Uh, it's 30 euros cost. Um, and please ask one of our team members or someone within your teams uh, who is familiar with Google Translate, because Google Translate does it right away on the screen for you, or ask someone who speaks French. But again, we recommend you doing your testing before you get to the airport. Uh, one of the great resources I use, and my favorite, is really emed, emed.com, uh, where you can actually buy your antigenic test for yourself in the US, travel to your destination, and then you do your testing. Don't open the box. Do your testing in front of a supervised session on your camera. You go on camera with the, with the representative there of from, from Abbott's side. Abbott is producing these tests. You can do your testing in your hotel room, and it's an officially accepted, absolutely professional test that you do yourself in front of the camera. We also have testing on, on um, Amsterdam Airport. There's two providers. There's KLM Health Services. They only do PCR testing. They're going to give you the, uh, the URL, the web address for that, a website available both in Dutch and English. And there's another uh, external provider called test2fly.amsterdam. They also do testing in 15, 20 minutes uh, on the, on the uh, Schiphol Plaza, so actually the Conkers. Uh, that on the land side that connects to the Sheraton Hotel. So there's plenty of options out there. Uh, rest assured, we, we're going to provide you with the uh, URL addresses um, after this session in the post-event email. Hope that's, that's helpful. Right. That's right, Botan. We will be sending an email after this session with all of the links that Botan just mentioned um, and Fabrice during this whole session today. And not to mention, um, today's uh, today's AFK Live will be posted on our YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe to that. Um, next question. Anyone? Let's see what we have. Okay. Uh, Lisa asks, how much time does it take how much time does someone who does not move so quickly realistically need at CDG in Amsterdam for an international connection? No, great, great question. Um, and I would really encourage someone who doesn't move really fast or has mobility issues to ask for a wheelchair assistance, or we have the little golf cart assistance on a Schiphol airport and Charles de Gaulle airport as well. However, generally, uh, from personal experience, I can tell, and I've been I've been on both airports many many times, connecting to to and from the US. Um, it takes between twenty five to thirty minutes to connect on on both airports. Really, um, of course, every airport has its uh, peaks, and if you run into one of those peaks, this timing can be a little bit longer than that. Um, the signalization on Charles de Gaulle Airport has been dramatically improved in three languages, actually, English, French, Mandarin as well. Uh, it has always been very clear on Amsterdam Airport. Uh, the minimum connecting times that we put in the systems is 60 minutes, 60 for, M for uh, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, international to EU connections. Uh, and on the Amsterdam Schiphol side, this is 50 minutes uh, in the GDS systems. So largely enough time on Schiphol Airport for sure. Good, good. I see that question came up a couple times in the chat. So hopefully that helps a few of our audience members. Next question. I know there are a lot of good ones out there. Is there a separate security and or customs queue for business class and La Premier? The question is from Jerome. Hello, Jerome. Good question. Well, I mean, as you, you all know, the uh, the La Première, and I mentioned it on the on on my uh, little speech. Uh, we do have the cars on the tarmac, so uh, the connection between two flights are actually uh, very easy and can be done in no time, uh, providing that the, the the luggage follows. But even on the 
on the luggage, uh, our staff are uh, instructed to put the, the luggage in a special dedicated area, which is very uh, quick access to uh, our staff at Charles de Gaulle that unload the bags. Um, for um, custom, we have a, a custom officer at the uh, lounge, in the La Première lounge. So for any uh, connecting passengers, then the connection is done uh, in the lounge. Of course, there will be days where the uh, uh, custom officer may not be there. And if it's not there, then we have a special queue also uh, at the general um, uh, custom, which is a bit separated from, from the crowd. And they go nonstop without stopping as they all are greeted uh, by a La Première attendant. Okay, thank you so much, Fabrice. Hopefully that answers Jerome's question. Next question from Michelle. What are the airside hotels in each airport? Yeah, thanks for the question, uh, Michelle. There's there's plenty of options on both airport, uh, airports. Um, so for Amsterdam, you have the Yotel and you have the Mercure Hotel, which is part of the Accor chain. These are both on the air side. Then you have, of course, uh, tons of other options around the airport. Uh, the closest one being Sheraton, uh, one of the American chains, uh, which is on the on the uh, land side. For Paris, Charles de Gaulle, there's another hotel uh, in the middle of uh, Hall L. So on the two E conquers Hall L. Very convenient location. Books up pretty fast, so I encourage everybody to, to go ahead and book uh, uh, as, as early as you can. Uh, and then, again, the Sheraton is, on, although it's on the land side, but it, 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 it is in between terminals 2B, A, and E, so at a very central location, just as some other core options, which are land side, but extremely close walking distance, or you can reach these hotels with the little train that goes in between the terminals. So very convenient ones. Thank you, Botand. Next question. Lee asks, is it possible to set up a meet and greet service on arriving KLM flights to Amsterdam? Absolutely, it, it is possible. Uh, Schiphol Airport has a service, so this is not a KLM uh, provider provided service. This is Schiphol Airport, um, what they call the the jet center. Uh, we will provide the uh, email address, contacts to the jet center, the website address, um, an external provider. They provide also um, a car transfers, gate to gate. Uh, they provide uh, private jet transfers as well from Schiphol on arrival. So they have a very wide scope, but the majority of their business is really walking in between terminals or taking the little golf carts in between terminals and taking your VIP uh, customers. Good to know that service is available. Thank you, Votand. We still have time for a couple more questions. Maybe one more. From John, what is the process for a business class passenger checking in at Amsterdam for a flight to JFK? In terms of a check-in for business class passengers, it is the most convenient process. Really my favorite is Amsterdam Schiphol Airport um, because you have a dedicated sky, sky priority zone there very clearly marked on the land side of the airport, uh, dedicated for our premium customers. Uh, now, this zone actually has a dedicated escalator uh, and an elevator that takes you up on the departures levels. It's, it's a, a restricted elevator, a restricted staircase and escalator that takes you up to the first floor. And in there, it's a dedicated security lane as well. Uh, you may have spotted it in the video before uh, that the uh, security lanes at that part of the airport are already the new ones that we have. So you do not need to pick out your uh, laptops, your phones, uh, nothing from your bag. You just leave them in. Even smaller water bottles can be kept. They don't have to be thrown away because these new security uh, scanners are able to go through and, and check properly. So 
one of the best security check-in check -in experiences and security experiences for me are on Schiphol Airport. You immediately get to the passport control area and actually you exit uh, the Dutch territory going on the land side via an automated gate that was also shown on our, on our video before uh, with US, Canada passports. You can easily breeze through those gates. You don't even need to see a, a customs officer anymore. Very good. All right. I think we have time for one more question. Who is it going to be? Holly asks, did you say there is no security check on the connection, only passport control? Yep, that's absolutely right, Holly. That's exactly how it works at Schiphol. So once you clear security here in the US, North America, uh, you fly into Schiphol, there's no additional security check. You just go to the passport control. You see, you use either the automated passport uh, control machines that I mentioned before, or you see a, a, a policeman, a customs officer, and, and then you're in the uh, Schengen zone. Basically, you're inside. It's a, a very easy process, very simple process. No additional security check. Well, that is always a plus. So guys, that's all the time we have for you today. Fabrice, Botond, thank you so much uh, for the great overview on our current airport experience at Paris CDG and Amsterdam airports. Good, thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, uh, Botan. Uh, thank you all, travel uh, partners. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to again to be here today. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your support, uh, which we appreciate uh, enormously. Uh, now the mm -hmm. borders uh, should be opening soon, so let's uh, get some additional uh, bookings. And uh, thank you again for everything you do for us. Likewise, really appreciate all your support. Thank you very much for watching us today and thank you for your, your support the entire year. I know this has been a really tough period for many of you, just like for us, for the entire industry, but we will get through this together and there's light at the end of the tunnel. We're really looking forward for the US opening up the borders as well. Hopefully it's going to happen soon and then we'll be back in business again. We're revamping capacities, we're pulling back, bringing back flights to the US, Canada, Mexico. So looking forward to working together with you and continue the great cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And to everyone at home, we hope you enjoyed today's AFK Live. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find a recording of today's session, as well as our newsletter for US travel professionals. Thank you so much for your time today and hope to see you on board soon.